All right, folks. Uh, let's uh, now go to New York, where day four of the R. Kelly trial uh, took place today with explosive testimony for a woman who claims uh, that she was sexually abused by R. Kelly when she was 17 years old. This is, again, day four of the trial of the R&B singer. Uh, and like last week, testimony have been nothing short of shocking. One of, R one of Kelly's former girlfriends, Asriel Clary, testified the singer knowingly passed on a sexually transmitted disease to her, adding the artist promised fame in exchange for sexual favors. However, Kelly's lawyers have labeled the accuser's groupies who want to take advantage of his fame and fortune. Now, Kelly is found guilty. He'll be uh, sentenced to life in prison. Joining me now to discuss this is Oranique Odelier, o o o o o a co-founder of uh, Hashtag Meet R. Kelly. Hope I pronounced that correct. You were pretty close. It's Oranique Odelier. Gotcha. Over oh, Nikkei, oh, Delay. Okay, got it. So, over oh, Nikkei, uh, let's, let's talk about what we're seeing now. First off, we're actually seeing, for the first time, women who were sexually assaulted uh, by R. Kelly when they were underage. That is not what we experienced in his first trial when he was acquitted in Chicago. Yeah, I think um, now, you know, with all of the progress that we've made as a society, as a culture, and as a community, women now feel safer and more emboldened to show their face um, and, and stay in front of the world what happened to them. Um, I think back during his first trial, uh, we weren't in a place where those young women and their families felt that they could do that and be safe um, and move forward from it with their lives. I mean, so made choices to not come forward. Uh, but now, luckily, um, you know, we're, we're, we're in a different space. And so these women feel like they can do that. And we're super proud um, and supportive of them uh, because it's really important that they do. This doesn't stop unless we have a space for women to stand up and say what happened to them and speak their truth and be heard and be listened to and their claims be taken seriously. Um, so we're really happy to see this. The... Um this is just one trial. Uh, he also is facing um, um, uh, prosecutors in two other states as well. Uh, it, it is clear uh, that federal prosecutors uh, are clearly, clearly um, looking at R. Kelly and want to make sure that he does not have another free day in this society. Yeah, I mean, this evidence has been out here in the public for decades at this point. I mean, we all had it, you know, DeAndre on the block had this evidence. Um, you know, we, we all have seen, heard, know someone who has experienced um, R. Kelly's perversity and his crimes against these young women. Um, so none of this is really, really new. I think at this point, um, you know, they really are gathering up all of the, the cords of, of um, history that's out there to really, really throw the book at him. But it's so long overdue. We knew what was happening literally 30 years ago. It's taken that long for us to get to the point where prosecutors want to take these women seriously, the community is taking these women seriously, and people feel like that, you know, enough is enough. Um, I don't know why it's taken us this long, because we really didn't need all of the carts and carts and carts of evidence that they, they brought in on the first day of trial, we knew from the videotape forever ago what this man was doing to young women. Um, so, you know, I mean, he I, I can't see how he can maneuver out of this, but stranger things have happened. So we're keeping a close eye on it. The thing here that um, I, I think is is really, really uh, in, important as well is that the crumbling of the infrastructure around R. Kelly, some would say, because the money ran out. Uh, prosecutors have been helped because the, the women, again, like uh, uh, Asriel, one of the women who was fiercely defending him, they actually then began to turn on him. So now you have first-hand accounts from people who were inside of uh, R. Kelly circles now testifying against him. Yeah, a big part of that absolutely is the money running out, which is why Meet R. Kelly was a call for a financial boycott of the singer. We've known forever that it was the money that insulated him from the consequences of his crime. It was the money that allowed him to pay off families. It was the money that allowed him to pay off victims. It was the money that allowed the record companies to um, feel that they needed to continue to hide what he was doing and clean up after him. 
It was the money that was hiring, the bodyguards that were, were guarding these women. You know, I mean, it's always been the money that has kept him from consequences. Um, and so we called for people to stop financially supporting him so that that wall could come down between him and justice. Um, and when the money goes, people are less inclined to hide your secrets. They're less inclined to, you know, try to uh, take up for you out here because they have no longer, they no longer have a financial incentive. So you're seeing, you know, managers and road managers and, and people who have worked with him now will come forward because he's no longer the cash cow. Um, and so now they've got to think about saving their own butts and they're going to, you know, spill the beans in court to do that. Um, I want to pull in uh, Toron and uh, Avis as well. I mean, th this is, is, is to the point that Oranike makes there, uh, uh, Avis, it was absolutely vital to go after the money. The reality is there were stations that continued to play his music. Uh, there were individuals that continued to, uh, to, to, to book him. Uh, I remember when he was on the Tom Jonah Morning Show cruise. Uh, and it was very, I mean, I, I remember being at that cruise going, are Kelly's performing? Really? <laughs> who approved that? Um, and there were a lot of people who, again, who, who made excuses uh, because the reality is R. Kelly was still a hit maker. That's exactly right. I mean, you know, this is no secret. Absolutely correct to say uh, that uh, his abusive behavior has been known literally for decades. Uh, and there has been several, like, investigative reports. You know, you, you, you would have to have your head in the sand not to know what was going on with R. Kelly and what had been going on on with R. Gelly since the days of Aaliyah, okay? And so it, it, what it has shown to me though, uh, when, when I think about it over the years, because I was one of the people, even in those times, like you, asking in a variety of this, this situations, we still giving this man legitimacy? I, what does that say about how much we value, or shall I say devalue black girls? You know, if he was targeting uh, white girls in the way that he was a serial abuser to black girls, would he would have had all of these decades of freedom? And why is it that the black community for so many years seemed to give him a pass? Because they kind of like the music that he was coming out with. It, it, is, it is both the money, but it's also, for some reason, a community response that still seem to, on the one hand, still reward him by still going to his concerts, by still buying his music, by still sort of shaking their butts to his latest hit, uh, and at the same time making excuses, as well as blaming, victim blaming, uh, the young women that he himself were targeting, going to, going to schools, getting girls leaving school, you know, come on now. We've known this for decades. So I would just, you know, I would just have to say, it is about time that the chickens came home to roost. Yes, I agree that the money needed to be uh, sort of uh, cut off in order for people to come out of the woodworks who had been protecting him in the past because they knew that they were getting some money on the back end. But it's unfortunate that the money had to be come off for people to finally uh, live up to some sense of morality. Toron, uh, it was the pressure uh, led by uh, a number of black women that created the critical mass to get to the point we're at with this trial uh, in uh, Brooklyn. Well, you know, um, there's a saying that people's morality only goes as far as their pocketbook. And I think it's ex I think it's a wonderful thing that What's what you're seeing with the situation with R. Kelly's finally coming to pass and you're starting to see some things come to fruition. But something I want to um, point out is that even though what R. Kelly's accused of and these crimes are disgusting, he's just one example of something that's very prevalent in entertainment. Um, the entertainment business can be a very ugly place. It can be a very, very predatorial place. It can be very dangerous for um, women, especially black women, and for men to that to, that, to a degree. But because so many people who are so guilty of a lot of these crimes are insulated, like the um, other two ladies said, by um, 
power structures and by record labels and by um, a whole infrastructure that basically shields them from any responsibility for, for the things they do, it is very rare for a situation like this to get to this point. I think what happened with Harvey Weinstein kind of like opened a lot of doors and it kind of knocked down some walls about like what you can do and how far power can go in the entertainment business if you are like say a celebrity and you have people who are willing to cover for you. But we live in an age now where a lot of the things that we heard about in the 60s and 70s with like rock bands and like with punk rock bands and even country stars and this sort of thing, you had you didn't have the you didn't have the fast moving infrastructure and the fast moving social media that got these stories out into the public like you do now. So what you're seeing is immediate results, even though in this case it took decades to happen. A lot of these stories don't no longer are hidden in behind the scenes until somebody writes a book 20 to 20 years later. So what you're seeing is a little bit more of a faster response to these things than you would in the past. But make no mistake. R. Kelly is just one example of a very prevalent thing that happens in entertainment. And there's people in the industry who are doing the exact same things, most likely. They're just not known just yet. Absolutely. Or Renee Kate, a final okay. comment, please. I would absolutely agree. The entertainment industry is is rife with these type of problems. And I think that we always have to remember at the end of the day, we have more power than the structures that we are supporting. Like these structures only exist because we put our money um, into them. You know, and record companies can't exist without our streams, without our sales, um, without us going to concerts. And so I think that even if they don't have a financial incentive um, to do the right thing and to impose some level of morality on their artists, we have a responsibility to do that. We have a responsibility to call them out we have a responsibility to say we're not going to support these artists and we're not going to support your label if you are um, funding abusers, um, rapists, murderers, all, you know, all the kinds of things that the record companies are, are, are willing to overlook for profit. We have to step up and say we're not going to stand for it. Um, I think part of the victory of R. Kelly getting to this point is that it took all of us standing up to all these structures of power and saying, no, actually, we have the power and we have decided enough is enough. And I think we have to continue to do that so that they know the minute they see these type of issues, they got to start pulling some coattails and not let this be a 10, 15, 20, 30 year problem that just goes on and on forever. Um, it's something that they nip in the bud from the jump. Um, I think we have to remember always that we are the ones with the power and we can say that we're not going to stand for it. All right, well, Renee K, we appreciate it. Thanks so much for all your great work. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Folks, that's our whole mock unfiltered video in just one moment. Chic.com is founded by Mary Spio, a sister. It is a virtual reality company uh, where they have content on their site. Again, Seek.com. They also have their products. They have the 360-degree headphones. Uh, these uh, headsets are amazing. Uh, tremendous base. You can all use, them, use these headsets for gaming as well. Plus, they have their virtual reality headsets where you place your cell phone into the device to allow you to see that VR content, but also 360-degree video. If you want to uh, get that headphone, get those headphones or the VR headset, all you got to do is use this promo code, RMVIP21, RMVIP21. Uh, 21. Go to Seek.com uh, to get their products. When you support them, you support us because a portion of the proceeds come back to us at Roland Martin Unfiltered. Well, the R. Kelly trial goes into day six banned. Just really just more shocking testimony. Kelly's defense team cross-examined the unnamed witness who testified on yesterday. He asked the witness to read letters she wrote to the family members while living with Kelly as one of his girlfriends. In one letter, she accused her mother of telling Kelly since he was sleeping with her, he needed to send $10,000 to an account provided by her mother. Uh, in another letter uh, to her brother, the witness listed actions their parents allegedly put her up to to get money from Kelly, including telling her to lie about her age to him and the police. However, prosecutors argue Kelly 
forced the witness to write the letters. Uh, we have we have heard all sort of just uh, shocking and damning testimony uh, in this trial here. Uh, you know, f federal prosecutors are really uh, laying out a very strong case uh, against R. Kelly. It is one of three trials potential trials he may face is going on now, but there are two other jurisdictions that he's going to be facing charges, Scott. Uh, and so uh, his attorneys, uh, they have an uphill battle, especially when you have women who uh, who were with him, who talked about uh, sleeping with him, being forced to do so uh, when they were underage. Yeah, and while they lied to him about him being them being underage, while they lied about that, and while they told other public lies, the government explained that away through these witnesses by saying that they were forced to lie because of their fear of uh, R. Kelly. Now, the defense lawyer has been cross-examining these witnesses. He's got to be careful now because he's got a charge whereby he had sex with these women and passed on an STD to them, which is against the law without putting them on notice. He's transporting younger people vis-a-vis -vis statutory rape, whether they lied to him or not. Uh, in violation of what we used to call the Man Act across, uh, across state lines, and then that he has a racketeering charge where he has a criminal enterprise whereby he invites these women with a team of other people to either incarcerate them in their home, but also to transfer them uh, across state lines as well as to have sex with underage girls. Uh, it's a well-charged uh, case against him, and while the defense can nip at the credibility, if you will, how these witnesses, how these women, these victims are holding up on the stand uh, is, is really impressive. Even though they've lied before, they've explained why they lied. And even if you say they don't have credibility, the fact of the matter is the medical records show that they had sex at an early age or, uh, you know, as a juvenile, one. But two, the medical records show that he passed on an STD to them. Uh, I think it's going to be a hard road to hoe um, um, uh, to get around it, even if you're, you're going to argue at the end with the jury that all of the women are lying, they all wanted money, their, their families wanted money, and they, they're being, he, they, he's in this position because of their greed and he wouldn't give them money. That has nothing to do with whether he engaged in sex with them while they were underage or he had, or he had a criminal enterprise of women who he kept there and they had to call him daddy and, and all these other things. And so I don't think the defense gets there in the end. I'm not sure why they haven't entered into a plea agreement, but every case is different. Every defendant is different. And uh, this could put him in jail for quite some time. Kelly? I mean, the reason why they haven't entered a plea agreement, in my opinion, is probably because R. Kelly is refusing any plea agreement. Um, if we know anything about R. Kelly, he has an ego. Um, and that is evident in his mannerisms, both on and off stage. That is evident in his personal life um, and his professional life. None of this surprises me. The fact that the, he doesn't have a plea deal, the testimony that's coming about in court, again, and I think I said this on your show previously, we have known that R. Kelly is disgusting for decades. It is just coming to light in this regard because of the shift in culture when it comes to believing women, specifically believing black women, and not letting um, misogynoir and power overtake uh, one's credibility. Um, this man has a lengthy history of absolutely disgusting behavior towards women and young girls. And the fact that it is just coming to light, um, or rather just getting to court in this regard, again, um, is really a, a tragedy and a testimony to how, uh, how the justice system just hasn't looked out for these girls, how the justice system hasn't looked out for black women. Um, yeah, R. Kelly needs to be under the jail, period. Um, anything that comes to light now is honestly just icing on top of the crappy cake that he has made for almost three decades at this point. Brianna? Yeah, it's. <laughs> I think that he needs to 
enter into a plea deal. I, there's not that much more I can say. I hope that it happens, and I hope that uh, when he does enter a plea deal, it's um, it's these people that have been victims um, receive their fair justice, and it's not a crappy one like they gave uh, Bill Cosby. Um, I do think that we need to um, listen and protect black women, and it's just atrocious that this has gone on so long, and I don't I mean, that last witness was damning. Um, so I don't really know how they're going to come back on the defense. Um, but I do think that a, a plea deal needs to be entered and he needs to yeah. go away for a while. Yeah. Hey, hey, Roland, real quick for your listening oh. audience. The fact that they were consensual, at least initially in having sex or, or continue to have sex, allegedly consensually, uh, doesn't matter. The conviction and the charges, if they meet those elements, are still going to be, be um, the jury can still find against him. There's no contributory negligence or contributory part on the women, whether they were of age or not of age. Football bans and one of the best fan experiences in the country. The Cricket BX Swack Challenge kickoff returns to Atlanta on August 28th, along with special guests, college game day. Then Alcorn State takes on North Carolina Central with conference bragging rights on the line. Center Park Stadium is the place to be on August 28th. Come tailgate all day before enjoying a primetime matchup on the gridiron. You don't want to miss this. Check out MeaxSpikeChallenge.com for more information. And, of course, folks, join Roller Martin Unfiltered in Atlanta Friday and Saturday for the SWAC MEAC Challenge. Friday, we'll be broadcasting live from the Atlanta Braves baseball game. We'll be hearing from the commissioners of the SWAC and MEAC, plus school presidents and other great guests. On Saturday, we'll be from the Coca-Cola Fan Zone at the stadium where the game is taking place. We'll be broadcasting live. Some great uh, things going on. Tig is going to be spinning. they got some chefs out there with the Coca-Cola Kitchen. We're going to have some phenomenal stuff for you. Plus, We'll be live streaming the halftime show and the concert after the game. Check out Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday and Saturday. And we thanks all of this in partnership with Coca-Cola, the Swag Meg Challenge. We'll see you all there. In the R. Kelly trial uh, on day three, Anthony Navarro, who worked for R. Kelly, uh, testified the artist created an environment where he called all the shots. Former employees say that Kelly controlled whether visitors at the Chicago area mansion uh, could leave or even order takeout food. The testimony bolstered the government's contention that, that R. Kelly controlled everything around him and created an environment where girls and women who entered the space uh, faced strict rules that gave them little choice but to submit to the singer's sexual whims. Now, on yesterday, uh, the doctor who treated R. Kelly for herpes uh, said that he would often uh, that he allowed him to see him, but not necessarily treat him. Uh, in fact, uh, that when he was initially called uh, to because uh, R. Kelly was concerned that he had uh, chlamydia, uh, he tested negative for that, but he did test positive for herpes. Several of the women said that R. Kelly knowingly gave them herpes uh, by having sex uh, with them. Uh, the testimony from the doctor was quite graphic. He talked about uh, how R. Kelly would call him uh, with lesions, first suggesting that, oh, they'd happen because he wore leather pants without underwear. Mm, no, it's not what happened. Uh, it was actually him having a sexually transmitted disease. The doctor said, though, that R. Kelly never paid him. But he did fly the doctor and his wife all around the country uh, to various concerts. Um, what we are seeing in this trial, Brittany, is a lot more than what we saw in his first trial a number of years ago in Chicago. You actually have people, w women, who are testifying against R. Kelly. This is not the only trial. It's what he faces uh, cases in two other states. And so if, it's a, if, he, if a miracle happens and he gets off in this case, he still has to contend with the other cases. Uh, R. Kelly looks like uh, the jig is up. 54 years old, he may be spending the rest of his life behind bars. Yeah, you know, Roland, I wish um, we as a society, um, specifically our community as well, to protect Black victims, protect Black women, and hold our sexual and domestic abusers accountable. This man should have already been behind bars. 
We knew R. Kelly was a predator decades ago when they were on the corner selling the tape where he peed on that young child. And we ignored it because he had some hit songs and we love to blame the victim. We love to tell our young girls who are children that they're fast instead of holding these old behind predator men like R. Kelly accountable for trying to flirt, sexually abuse, groom, and rape these young kids. Um, so I, I hope that, that this is a wake-up call to our society because it shouldn't even have to have gone on this long for us to stop victim blaming because that's why it has gone on for so long. Stop asking women, well, what did you drink and what did you have on instead of asking because the only thing that causes a rapist to rape is being a rapist. And stop having society ask the victim, well, why didn't you leave? Ask the abuser why they're hitting someone, you know, and, and really do what's right by these by these victims because it's absolutely ridiculous. And this man should have been behind bars, but I do think it's inevitable. He, he's going to end up where he deserves to be. Um, and again, uh, in each day, uh, we're seeing uh, quite graphic testimony uh, in this trial, Kelly. Yeah, um, just something that you said really quickly. He actually tested negative for herpes and tested positive for something else, but he was being treated for herpes and the doctor concluded based off of his reaction to the treatment that he had herpes, but he did test negative for it. I just wanted to clarify that. It's still all disgusting, but I just wanted to clarify. Either way, like Brittany said, this man needs to be under a jail cell. We knew that he was a predator before the tape. We knew he was a predator when he married Aaliyah, a 15 year old. Um, we knew when, his, uh, when the album that he made with Aaliyah started off with AJ nothing but a number you know, his his handle or nickname was literally the Pied Piper. And if you don't know what a Pied Piper is, it's it's a older man who plays like some type of flute or piper who and that music lures children to this predator. And he embraced that moniker. We've known for a very long time that R. Kelly is gross. We've known for a very long time that R. Kelly is is a child abuser. But the fact that there are still supporters of R, of R. Kelly right now supporting him through this trial is absolutely disgusting to me. And the only question I have for them are like, how, how do you hate yourself this much? How, how dissociated are you from reality to enable a predator of this magnitude? Because the facts have been out there. He has admitted on in several occasions, interviews and the like, that he has an affinity for children. He's a disgusting man. And for you in 2021 to still support him and go so far as to think that, you know, the system is against him and people are racist and people are, it, it, it's just, it's gross to me. He needs to be under a jail cell. And oh. yeah. Uh, so, uh, so uh, let, let me say this here. First of all, uh, the doctor had been treating Archelaus since 1994. Uh, what he said is uh, that he suspected uh, uh, he had herpes as early, general herpes as early as 2000 because of the symptoms. Uh, right. The doctor testified there was a lab test that came back negative, but the doctor said the timing of the test is important and the test itself can at time give false negative results. The doctor said, quote, I did not conclude that he did not have herpes. McGrath testified uh, in referring to his various medical records. He did say uh, over a period of time that he was treated for herpes five times uh, since 2000. Uh, so uh, that, that was what the doctor actually testified. Uh, Jason, when you look at um, uh, look at this case, when you look at, for, again, the number of people testifying, what you did not have before, you, did, you, you, you had a lot of people who did not testify. In fact, in the previous case, the young girl that was seen in the video, first of all, people got to remember, R. Kelly was found not guilty because the jury could not ascertain the age of the girl in the video. But they, they, they forced a delay for so long, by the time that she actually testified, she was much older and so therefore they could not reconcile that. That's, that's, that's actually what happened uh, in that particular case. This is different. You now actually have former employees testifying against him, women involved testifying against him. And so the prosecution has a lot more ammunition uh, to target R. Kelly. Yeah, I, I think that the prosecution is probably gonna have a pretty rock solid case. 
Um, and they're going to have, you know, now the documentaries have been made. I, I didn't watch uh, the documentaries, but one of the things that I think we, uh, you know, kind of piggybacking off of what Brittany was saying in terms of this being a cultural moment for, for you know, our people is that we, we really need to address, you know, sexual assault and, and uh, predatory behavior because it, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but R. Kelly was a victim of sexual assault of his sister, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, I'm sure his sister was probably a victim of someone else. We've got to start to address these issues in our community to cut them off so that we don't have generations and generations of victims and people victimizing other people. Um, you know, R. Kelly is going to be where he deserves, I believe. Um, and I was I was shocked that he got away with it in in uh, the 90s. Um, and I was really shocked with some of the responses that would come on the radio when they would talk about it. People in our community, how they were blaming the victim. I think I read an interview with the victim where she blamed herself. Um, I think that these are cultural, uh, you know, moments where we have to do some teaching um, and 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 learn so that we don't actually keep this kind of thing going and looking the other way when it's happening because. You know, I, I knew people who said they, you know, this was a well-known thing in Chicago that that R. Kelly would come by the high school, you know, um, that they knew that he was, you know, picking up girls at the high school when he was well over age. So this is something that we have to stop looking the other way. And hopefully this will be a, a teachable moment for, for the uh, culture. Uh, it was actually R. Kelly's brother uh, who said that, uh, that the two of them were molested by their older sister. R. Kelly also uh, had said that he was molested by, uh, by a man when he was around 10 years old. Uh, bottom line is, with, even with, with all of that, where you're seeing, again, prosecutors lay out uh, a very, very lengthy, um, a lengthy uh, list of evidence in this case. And so we're going to be covering this uh, uh, even further. Let's go back to our Mark unfiltered video in just one moment. Football bands and one of the best fan experiences in the country. The Cricket BX Swag Challenge kickoff returns to Atlanta on August 28th, along with special guests. College game day. Then Alcorn State takes on North Carolina Central with conference bragging rights on the line. Center Park Stadium is the place to be on August 28th. Come tailgate all day before enjoying a primetime matchup on the gridiron. You don't want to miss this. Check out MeaxSwackChallenge.com for more information. Don't forget, folks, Roland Martin Unfiltered is going to be broadcasting live from Atlanta on Friday and Saturday. Friday will be at the Atlanta Braves Stadium uh, talking to uh, the presidents of both universities uh, as well as officials with the SWAC and MEAC. Then on Saturday, we'll be at the Coca-Cola Fan Zone broadcasting live from uh, that, that particular afternoon. And then, of course, we'll be uh, live streaming the halftime show and the concert taking place after, after the game. You can watch it at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. And we appreciate it in partnership with Coca-Cola of making this happen. See you next week. We could not get through this show without talking about the Pied Piper. Today marks day seven of the R. Kelly trial. In a testimony, Tom Arnold, Kelly's former studio manager, testified that the singer docked his pay because he booked a male tour guide for Kelly and his girlfriend when they attended Disney World. Arnold told jurors that he finally got fed up with the singer's bizarre rules and quit in 2011, stating that Kelly always requested a female tour guide when on trips. The former employee added that the troubled singer would fine staffers for minor infractions, such as eating his donuts. R. Kelly is charged with nine counts of racketeering in violations of the Federal Man Act. The stories that we're hearing coming out of here, uh, both Reese, Dr. Carr, the stories we're hearing coming out of this trial have been devastating, to say the least. This is a lot bigger than, um, th th than the Lifetime special that we saw, uh, that everybody saw about R. Kelly. At this point, you're having people speak about very, in very, in very grave detail about sexual deviance, about physical punishments, about basically being held captive, about the, the rules of people who they weren't allowed to contact that they had to let R. Kelly know and get permission before they went to the bathroom, that they couldn't go outside without a male escort. We're hearing more and more details, gruesome details in many cases, coming out of this trial. Um, what, what are your thoughts thus far with what you've seen and heard, Reese? 
Um, first, I don't know if you know Farashi is still there, <laughs> but um, I will say. Oh, but I, I will say I, it's it's horrific. Number one, and, and you know, I one of the things that I really hate, to be honest, is the way that um, Aliyah is being dragged into this. You know, yesterday was the anniversary of her um, passing, or no, I'm sorry, her birthday, and um, you know, it's just uh, she's not here to defend herself, so it's just really horrific to hear her um, life being talked about in a way that, you know, she had completely moved on from that chapter in her life. But, you know, she, just because she's famous doesn't mean that her um, trauma or, her, or what she suffered from is any worse than anybody else. I mean, he he's a predator. He is a predator and, um, you know, he took advantage of people, not just sexually, but with his power. I mean, he could go to jail for labor violations, you know? I mean, he's just an all around scumbag and piece of shit. And, you know, I, I don't see how anybody can can watch what's happening here and listen to the stories that are just so, um, you know, plentiful and still manage to defend him and still manage to come up with crazy notions that there's a conspiracy against him and, oh, why, are, why you know, why are you going after after black men, you know, and where's Harvey Weinstein and this, that, and the other, you know, he needs to be held accountable for his um, atrocities that he has conducted over and over again. And it's actually amazing that he isn't on trial for even more crimes. I think he's getting off quite easy with what he is um, alleged to have um, done. Faraji, I'm going to get you in here before we have to move on to our next story. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the most recent developments in the R. Kelly trial? First, I appreciate you, Reese, for making that, uh, for, for bringing that to the light about Aaliyah. I think that um, it's interesting that um, the prosecutors decided to use her story. And I, it, I mean, I'm glad that they used her story because so many of us probably were still in the dark about really how deep that rabbit hole goes in terms of, you know, him starting to even look at Aaliyah at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. um, and then having sexual, you know, relationships with her, you know, you know, shortly thereafter, then the whole scare about him getting pregnant and then leading to the fake, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the fake documents and the whole nine about, to, you know, her age. And I mean, when you get to it, and I'm with Reese 1000%, absolutely sickening. I mean, folks, when you read, uh, when I read the, uh, the account of the testimony from what they classified as Jane Doe number five, I believe, which is Azrael, uh, McClary, who was a part mm -hmm. of that great, that, that historic conversation with uh, Gail King when they had that major interview, you know, and how she said she was, she lied during that interview, how she even, you know, R. Kelly was in the room and, and had coughed a couple of times if he felt like the answers were a little bit too incriminating for him mm -hmm. uh, about him. I mean, when you read these details, there's no way in the world that you can have a conversation and still say, oh, he's a musical genius. I can separate mm. him from the music. Right. Well, mm. you know, um, there's no way in the world that we can look at even the story of Aaliyah. And I'm with, again, I'm with Reese 1000% on this. She's not here to even defend herself. We celebrated or we acknowledged the 20 year death anniversary of our dear beloved sister. 20 years. She she lost her. She she was not here with us, and she can't defend herself. And 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 I don't know. You know, I, I just it left a bad taste in my mouth that the prosecutors used her story in such a way that that you didn't bring the parents in, you didn't bring any other close friends or relatives of Aaliyah into the conversation or into the stand. But R. Kelly, he I mean, folks, he deserves everything he gets. And if you sit there and tell me to this day that R. Kelly still should not get what he deserved because you don't think he, you're absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. I'm telling you, there's nothing else to it. You're just mm. insane. Dr. Carr, I know you have predicted before how you thought that this trial was going to go. Has anything shocked you or changed your, your mind in terms of believing that R. Kelly just might get off? No, no. I, I, it's just, Thank it's a trend. It's a tragedy. I mean, you know, first of all, there's no moral standard in this country, just like there's no moral mm -hmm. standard in Western civilization. And the rich hide their crimes. There was a president of the United States caught on tape saying I moved on her like a bitch. You can grab them by the, the P word. And he sat in the office and was, was elevated. This isn't mm -hmm. defending R. Kelly at all. This is saying that the madness runs deep in the human spirit. 
And people who are looking for an excuse will find one. Now, it's more likely than not that he will be convicted. And as we know, he's not just facing the New York court. He's got charges in several states. And as we just heard from everyone, these 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 witnesses, I mean, no human can hear that and not be moved. But the deep thing about this, I think, is that when we look in the mirror, when it's just us, we have to confront the fact that somewhere in every human being, there's something in our spirit, in our psyche, right. that must make us wonder, what kind of society do we live in? And do we really know the people we're talking to? Do we really know who we're dealing with? Because somebody, if they look, law, any lawyer will tell you, I just need a, I just need one in the box. I don't need to convince all the jury. <laughs> I just mm. need enough to get the guy off. What mm -hmm. are the odds? What are the odds? We just got to wait and see, y'all. At least that's that's what I think. Hey, Doc, can we get, can we also just and Reese? I, I love to get the thoughts on this. People have been saying, look at the parents that the parents are to blame. But I don't think you can blame the parents necessarily. And I get it, but I do, you know, I understand it's easy to quote unquote blame the parents for wanting to, you know, your daughter to be associated with this man. But I don't know, I'm, 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 it's hard. And I, and I would love to get, you know, just that, I know that there's a lot of conversation that we should, we should blame the parents. We should, we should charge the parents. We should punish the parents because nah. they put their daughters in that position. Now, Far Faraji, we had to ask Amisha. R, R. Kelly, R. R. Kelly put, <laughs> R. Kelly put their daughters in that position. And I think that it's very frustrating to see in, in any case where there is molestation, where there is rape, where there is sexual violence of any kind, parents get blamed for that. Because at the end of the day, this was a grown man making adult decisions. And the adult decisions he made was to prey on middle school kids and to prey on mm -hmm. early high school kids. This was a guy who literally parked his car outside of middle schools and waited for young girls to come out. This was a guy who went to the very well known hangouts of teens in the city and would try to entice girls. He would buy them clothes. He would buy them shoes. He would tell them that he could make them into superstars. He could make them into Aaliyah. He made dozens upon dozens of promises to these young girls. And then like many people who are manipulative, like many people who are abusers, he abused them. He scared them to death. He segmented them from their family and friends. And at the end of the day, they were stuck in basically a torture chamber of sorts for years. I, I think that mm -hmm. the only person that we can honestly blame here and put a lot of the blame on, it lands squarely on R. Kelly. Now, if we want to look at some other people, look at the people around him who made it happen. The people who were mm -hmm. his transport staff, the people who bought planes tickets for these young girls, the people who ensured that R. Kelly's no read and tell would be able to create fake IDs and a whole bunch of other things for these young children, because that's mm. what happened. He didn't do this solo. He had a whole team of people who made it possible. That's, mm. that's, and that's what makes it satanic. That really, I mean, mm. that's what makes it satanic. You had grown ass men and some women who allowed this to happen. And we know it. We hear the stories and we see those level of enablers. And I don't, and I'm gonna just tell you honestly, it's 2021. If you find a consciousness in 2021 after years of this, and you finally say, I had to say something on the stand, man, get the hell out of the, out of the <laughs> damn, my damn face, man. Like you finally had a damn heart. Now they, <laughs> they finally tried to not get massive charges is what they did. Mm -hmm. right. Right, my unfiltered video in just one moment. Football bans and one of the best fan experiences in the country. The Cricket BX Swack Challenge kickoff returns to Atlanta on August 28th, along with special guests. College game day. Then Alcorn State takes on North Carolina Central with conference bragging rights on the line. Center Park Stadium is the place to be on August 28th. Come tailgate all day before enjoying a primetime matchup on the gridiron. You don't want to miss this. Check out MeAxWackChallenge.com for more information. And, of course, folks, join Roller Martin Unfiltered in Atlanta Friday and Saturday for the SWAC MEAC Challenge. Friday, we'll be broadcasting live from the Atlanta Braves baseball game. We'll be hearing from the commissioners of the SWAC and MEAC, plus school presidents and other great guests. On Saturday, we'll be from the Coca-Cola Fan Zone at the stadium where the game is taking place. We'll be broadcasting live. Some great uh, things going on. Tigger's going to be spinning.
in. They got some chefs out there with the Coca Cola Kitchen. We're going to have some phenomenal stuff for you. Plus, we'll be live streaming the halftime show and the concert after the game. Check out Roland Martin Unfiltered on Friday and Saturday. And we thanks all of this in partnership with Coca Cola, the Swag Meg Challenge. We'll see you all there. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.